This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is Holly Christine. Hello, hello. Who's apparently been having some really weird dreams lately. <laughs> I, I blame Lord Cat. It's it's totally his fault. Yeah. <laughs> Which um, I'm only, I'm already gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. That way I don't forget it later because there are a few other things I want to talk about before we get into the news stories. But um, he has this show on his site LordCat.com called What W A T, which I recently discovered thanks to I, th I think you and he were talking about it. Probably. On Twitter. And I discovered uh, last month, I watched that, and that was the month that they had, oh, what's her name? The, the, I think it was Jenny McCarthy or whatever on, mm -hmm. the, on that one. And it's like, oh, God, her. I just downloaded the newest one right before we started recording. So after this, I'm going to have to watch that. But it's, it's pretty fun. You, you see all this fucked up shit, and they comment on it. And, and Lord Cat, if you're listening, I want to sit in on one. Yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of... It's meant to be sort of horrifying, and I, I admit yesterday was the first time in my viewing of the show that I've ever seen something that I actually had to look away from the screen for. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. It, you'll, you'll know it when you see it, but it involves two people making out. Oh, oh God, don't tell me they put up two girls. No, wait, making out. This is not two girls, one cup. Never mind. No. <laughs> I, I, don't th I don't know if he would go that far, or would he? No, because part of the uh, the thing about it is that it has to be on YouTube, but be under a certain amount of hits. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but so for those of you wondering um, about the dream, oh boy, <laughs> um, there was a video on what last night that had some guy who had shaved his entire body except his armpits. And, he, and he's he's dancing and you know lip syncing to this song and finally i'm like has anyone else noticed that he's shaved his whole body except for his armpits that seems like an odd choice that is it's like i like think, it, it, I think if he, you were gonna do that wouldn't you just go for everything i would assume so maybe he just forgot about his armpits because well, i'll be cause honest it like I he forget. shaved his arms and his legs yeah not I'll just be... his chest so it was like why yeah. didn't he shave his armpits it could be it could be a thing he may have just forgotten because I will admit most of the time I don't even well okay I don't think about my armpits very much anyway, but I tend to forget that there is hair under there because it's one of the th one of the parts of my body that just really. It, but he it, shaved everything else. That's the part that really gets me. I'm like, <laughs> why why would you do that? So last night I had a dream that I had shaved. All of my body except for my armpits. <laughs> I, like I was getting ready to go somewhere, and then I realized that I I had shaved everything else and not my armpits, and kind of freaked out. But yeah, so that was the dream. So I had mentioned to Lord Cat on Twitter that I had a dream that yeah. I didn't shave my armpits. Oh dear! And the, and <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, if that actually happened, we could call you Hairless Holly <laughs> because. I, I love even potential alliterations here. <laughs> oh, so so while we're we're on the uh, topic of shoutouts, do you have any you want to throw out there real quick? Yes. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> that is very forceful. Yes. Yes. Magdalene Cochran, Nicaea Summaries. Um, yes. Now, her newest thing is Fake Geek Girl Club. It is glorious. Oh, it is. I saw that. Yeah, it is geeky and girly, and, you know, it's just general news and other geeky things. It's not, you know, she's not up there trying to be all sexy and, oh, I'm, I'm a girl and I'm so geeky. It's just things that she's genuinely interested in, things other women will be interested in also. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about Geek Girl Club is... It is a totally meaningless title, so you can join it. She she's made up these membership cards that you can put your name and you know your areas of geekdom on it and your face. Um, and 
man, woman, intersex, whatever. Mm-hmm. Anybody can join. I got mine last night. I'm I'm still working on some. I can't art very well. I might ask Becky for help. I can't but... either. I'm like, I, and I'm seeing everybody else's being posted, and I'm like, oh, yours looks so good. And like, what am I gonna do? Print it off and then like draw in there by hand? Because <laughs> there's no way I can do it on the computer. Yeah. Somebody was like, I can't paint very well, and I was like, if I could do that and paint, oh my god, it would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, lordy. I, well, I know mine probably would have, let's see, those, what, the six slots for the geeky areas or whatever I think it is? <laughs> uh, yeah, I already know what, what three of mine would be. Mega Man, obviously. Yeah. Pokemon. And mm-hmm. Doctor Who. Doctor Who, Harry Potter, um, maybe Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd have to think. Yeah. Oh, a fourth one for my General Hospital, because Alice you can't. Wonderland. There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> ah, they're all good ones. Doesn't matter what you put in there. You can geek out about anything. You know, we, I mean, look at these sports fans all over the country. They're technically they're geeking out over guys throwing balls at each other. <laughs> so well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Oh, geeking out over balls. Hooray. Hmm. Oh, so that is our shout outs. And, and speaking of other, other uh, productions that have been on the web and been throwing around on the web, we got the results of the tests back, which is a really clumsy way of saying they finally announced or, or they sent out the emails to who made it on the channel. Awesome. Or who did. Yeah. Uh, none of my stuff made it on, which I probably surprised absolutely nobody. <laughs> nah, I, I admit I, pro- I knew I had a long shot, but you know it was nice to try out anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are some that that did make it on. I think at this point everybody that's on Shea Apocalypse is now over on Tig yeah. Tig as well. Uh, I know Count Jackula made it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Count Jackula! Some jerk with a camera made it. Yep. And I was like, yay! And a few other people I hadn't heard of before. Oh god, there was like there was one chick I. I forget her name right off, but I think she had, like, one video. Wielder of Dreams? Yes, thank you. Yeah. And it's like, huh, they should, they must have been really impressed with her. Yeah. I assume. <laughs> oh. But even but even with all that, you know, everybody is like, oh, well, you know, Tegu Tegu's not the only site in the world, and all these other sites, including Nerdvice and my site, RT Gomer Productions, have been put out there. Um, I'm not sure about Nerdvice being open for auditions, but I know my site is. Currently, as as this show is going, my site is still open for auditions. We've actually, we've actually had about I think six or seven send something in so far. We're not doing an official talent pickup right now at Nerdvice. Mm-hmm. Um, people are always free to send us stuff, um, but yeah, we um, we try to pick up a group of people at a time and incorporate them, and then you know go through and pick up another group. Because uh, otherwise, it's like Channel Awesome just picked up at least sixteen people, yeah, or sixteen shows rather. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't imagine trying to bring on that many people at the same time. Yeah. That would be insane. I don't remember how many Vera and I did in our last round, but it was a lot, and we still had to space it out. So we were only doing one a week. So that way, it was like, and here's your new producer, and you know. Yeah. Although I will, I will say for every, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark this and and say this on the show so people can actually hold me to it. Uh, for every new producer that we do pick up, I will give them, you know, they will automatically get, you know, a guest spot on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as we don't have somebody else already scheduled. Like next week, uh, this week we were supposed to have a uh, lady spaz on, but you know, life got in the way. She needed to take care of some things, so she's just gonna be on next week. So two weeks. So two weeks later, we'll have our first uh, new producer on uh, Thespian Talk. You know, just sit around, shoot the shit, say a little bit about who they are, and then and then just bombard them with news that will make them want to cry and lose faith in humanity. <laughs> I, I, I think I might make that the actual um, – oh, what do you call it? Oh, god. Um, 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 initiation. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Make it like the official site initiation. Come on the show and lose your faith in humanity. 
And if it's already gone, great. Then you fast. <laughs> uh, nah, but but it, w- it would be nice to showcase them out that way, I think. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, uh, but yeah, so two weeks from now, we'll have our first new producer on the show. Whoever that may be. I know there are a few of them that have sent in that are automatically guaranteed because I've seen their stuff before and, and I like them enough. I was actually considering asking one or two of them before the auditions even started up and went out and everything. So those, those one or two, they're automatically shoe-ins. I am not saying who they are because I don't want to give anybody big head or make any drama be generated or anything, but there's definitely at least two that are guaranteed to get in. So Because I've seen them before. I've scouted them out before and they sent it in and I went squeak. So that's always a good thing if you it, to make me go squee. Oh, but here's something that does not make me go squee. Did you hear about Google reaching a deal to buy Twitch? Yes. Yeah. Google, for those who don't know, also, I believe, owns YouTube, which is pretty relevant to me because all of my videos, most of my videos at this point, are going on YouTube. And YouTube is just infected with copyright bots, which... When, if you're actually breaking copyright, that's a good thing. But mm-hmm. if you're not breaking copyright, for, for me personally, it's these shows, you know, the Let's Plays. That's pretty much what goes up on my YouTube channel. And within the past week, I decided to try something different. And I, I was drunk. I said, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a see if I can't beat a game while I'm drunk. And so I turned on Fraps, turned on uh, Mega Man 4, and just went with it beat the game drunk i had to stop only once because well things came as they were and and i finished it and uploaded it after it finished uploading it it, i think it was even before i set it live umg universal music group these guys that i i want to find whoever is in charge of these guys and kick them in the nuts because they keep trying to claim the music from ev- from a lot of Mega Man games that I upload. And it's like, hmm. you don't, they don't own the rights to it. They, they honestly don't. It's owned by Capcom, not by UMG. And it's even weird. If, and even if it was owned by them or by Capcom, it's... Last I checked, Let's Plays do fall under fair use. It's not exactly taking away any profit. In fact, Let's Plays are the reason why some people try certain games. I mean, hell, like, right now, uh, the great Clement, he's doing a Let's Play of uh, Mega Man ZX, and I really want to go and find that game and play it myself. Well, there's even been issues of people, you know, um, publishers and developers who are like, yeah, please, let's play our game. You know, we'd love to see your footage of it, Mm -hmm. and YouTube will take it down. And and they're like, but the developer said. Yeah. (laughs) We don't care if the developers are not sucking our dick or giving us money or whatever, you know. Yeah, it's just the developers have it right. I mean, just and I want to say that Capcom is among those that's like, yeah, you're you're fine, you're good, you know, you're going to cause people to want to play our game and buy our buy our games. Which, by the way, my Mega Man, you know, my Gomer plays redo Mega Man games that I've been doing, and even the drunk one. All of those that I'm playing, you can get them on the Nintendo eShop. They're like five bucks a head. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I encourage people to go and buy these games. Yeah, you can watch me play them with my commentary and my things here and there, but it's not the same as actually playing the game. Sure, I might make it look easy or hard or whatever, but it's not the same as playing it. So, so if you really want to play it, go out and buy it. Simple as that. Oh, but the thing that really got me, though, I mentioned the drunken Mega Man 4 video. By the time it got put up, UMG had laid 11 claims. 11? 11. That is pretty much, let's see, that's eight Robot Master stages, and that's pretty much every Robot Master stage, plus at least two of the main themes for the Fortress stages, I would assume. I only looked as far as the Robot Master stages, but it's just... 11 stages worth of music that they're claiming. It's like, again, UMG does not own the fucking rights to Capcom's music. They just don't. So weird. And I keep appealing. I say, hey, they don't own the rights. 
and even if they did own the rights, it's called fair use. Of course, I can't exactly just say fuck off when I'm, you know, filing the appeals or, or whatever, but, you know, I, I do have a Twitter, and I could be just as colorful there. Because hmm. fuck them. Mm. Yeah. Ah. Oh. This is why I'm going to be so glad when I'm able to actually upgrade my site to where I can put all my videos on there and say, fuck you, YouTube copyright bots. I've got my own space. You can just you can just go die somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that that was that 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 happened. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Do you do you have any interesting stories you want to share before we head on to to the news stories? Because I've kind of been dominating a little bit. Uh, no, not well. I'm. I told my whole armpit story. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy. Ah. So all right, let's go ahead and hit the news. Mm. This one is out of based in Detroit a little bit. The city of Detroit has been steadily cutting off the water of residents who cannot pay their water bill, bills at around fifteen hundred to three thousand people per week. It is estimated that about half the city is behind on bills. In the words of one rested resident, when half the city can't do something, it tells you it's a systemic problem, which is which is true. I've, although I have also heard that if there is, I, I think it was like one of the studio, not studios, but stadiums or whatever, couldn't pay their water bill or whatever, and they got a free pass. Oh. Because because that 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 sports bar was all important, and and if you're just some. Um, some uh, poor person there who can't pay their water bill will fuck you. Uh, however, one unlikely organization believes it has the solution. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, also known as PETA, our friends, ladies and gentlemen, recently announced in a blog post that will assist it will assist ten families who cannot afford their water bills, but only if those families promise to go vegan for thirty days. The post says, with the help of a generous PETA member, we have come up with one small way to assist Detroit residents and save animals too. Thanks to this donor, PETA will be able to pay off the water bills for 10 families who commit to going vegan for one month. We'll also help them get started by giving each family a basket of healthy vegan foods and recipes. Now, there may be some families who might take them up on that, but what about families who either... You know, yeah, they have the the uh, starter basket of healthy vegan stuff. But what about when that runs out? How are they going to get more of the vegan stuff if they use it all up before the month is over? Yeah. You know, because vegan stuff, from what I'm understanding, is not exactly cheap. Yeah, most of it's not. I mean, unless you are just straight eating, you know, specific fruits and vegetables. And it has to, I mean, I'm talking specific. You know, you have to eat in season preferably local probably from a farmer's market to be able to get them affordably enough but if it's if it's any sort of specialized thing you're gonna be paying more money for that than you would you know for a gallon of milk and a carton of eggs yeah and there's another thing it's that it's looking to me like they're saying okay yeah we have this money we can help 10 of you which for one thing yeah 10 it's a little bit of a dent in the problem. Not a big dent, but it's a little dent in the problem. But they're not going to help unless you conform to the way we want you to eat. Which, you tell that to a poor person who is struggling and is having to deal with the fact that their water is shut off because they cannot pay their bills. That's That, to me, seems like it's a slap in the face. I mean, it's just, yeah, pay, eat our way and we'll pay your water bill. Well, I have to eat meat. Well, I guess you don't want your water bill paid. Uh, next. That's how it seems to me. I mean, I know somebody's heart is in the right place, but then somebody took that heart and twisted it around to to just make it to what it is. And it's just... Yeah. I, I, I mean, let's think about this. These people can't afford a thing that they need to live. Like, the number one thing that you would need money for to live. Mm -hmm. And let, let's see, what are we asking them to do? Um, if you could spend money um, so we can uh, pay your water bill, 
It's like, uh, no, if they had that money, they would just pay their fucking water bill. Yeah. It's just, just, you know, just, just pay the water bill. You say you got the money, just pay it. Yeah. You know, no strings attached. That will make you look even, that will make you look better than where you are right now. Not by much, but it will make you look a little better. And nobody would be bitching at you guys again. And as sad as it is, fast food is probably the cheapest option for most of these people. Yeah. Um, you know, now I can't remember where I saw it and I wish I did so I could give you guys the source, but I think it might have been on Slate Mm -hmm. that there was an article about how much meat prices have gone up lately. Yeah. And it's, it's been a lot where, um, fruits and vegetables mostly have gone up only a small amount, except for oranges for some reason. Um, (laughs) oranges? Yeah. Oranges. And I was like, well, I mean, it's it's not really the season for oranges, so yeah. I don't know, maybe that's part of it. Um, but it's like, still, that's, you know, even shopping at the grocery store, I don't think that people who don't have any money realize how much more expensive that is yeah. than fast food options. Yeah, I mean, hell, a gallon of milk. I, I, I recently you know, had to go down to the to the local grocery store to get a gallon of milk. I think at the Family Dollar here, which which now they're starting to become more like you know your your Walmart type stuff. You have the dry goods and then you have the foods, and all that. And I think a gallon of milk there, I want to say, is like three seventy five or something, give or take. Um, and meanwhile, at the, across the street at the Piggly Wiggly, it's like four something, which is ridiculous. I think for a gallon of milk. Here's the more ridiculous part. At that same family dollar, a half gallon of milk is three twenty-five, give or take. Mm-hmm. You would think it would be half price. Yeah. But it's not, and I don't know why. Somebody, somebody is scamming somebody somewhere. That's all I know. Uh, so if you buy milk at the family dollar, buy the gallon. It you know it's still a little bit more, but you get a lot more bang for your buck. <clears throat> Oh, I also fuck PETA. Extortionist assholes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a Virginia man was charged with felony child endangerment and indecent exposure on Friday after police found his one-year-old twin daughters inside his hot vehicle while he was having sex behind a friend's duplex. This guy. Wow. What the fuck, dude? Prince George police told WTVR that neighbors called on Friday to report hearing the sounds of children crying. Officers responding to the scene found that two one-year-old babies inside 27-year-old Juan Munford's hot car while he was having sex with a woman about 30 feet away. Well, it's okay. I've got my eye on them. They're just right over there. You know? Yeah, but you're having sex. Your eyes are going to be closed at least part of the time, and you got to concentrate on who you're having sex with. Okay. So, no. To this you... guy's, and I hate to say it, but okay. to this guy's credit, he at least left the windows down. Yeah. That, that, okay, credit where it's due, but so, still. So there is that. I mean, you definitely shouldn't be having sex on the ground behind a duplex. Um, you know, if you went over to... Uh, her house? Yeah, a woman. If you, if you went over to her house, why didn't you just go inside and take your babies in? Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> things like that happen. You know, you could have your babies, you know. I know I know a friend of mine, when she was living with her boyfriend at the time, you know, she had, like, like a little closet space cleared out and, and a playpen or whatever for her child. You know, who, you know, he's like one or two or whatever, so he couldn't do much anyway. And when he went down for the nap, he went in there and put the curtain, and you know what? They had sex right there. You know, child couldn't see, might have heard some funny noises, but the child probably wouldn't remember it too well. And there you go. That's what these. That's what this couple could have done. Find some. Find some space. Make sure the children are are, are quiet and, and calm. Put them somewhere where they're close enough to where you could get to them in a hurry if you need to, but also not so close to where you, they could accidentally wake up and see things that they really don't want to see at yeah. one year old. So. You know, you could have done that, but it's it's pretty bad when when Florida rednecks are thinking up better solutions to this problem than this guy from Virginia. Oh, and we know why we have a lot of the Florida stories that we do. 
I blame them on Florida Rednecks. <clears throat> oh, Toronto. Oh, Toronto. Eye doctors are urging consumers to be scrupulous about cleaning and caring for their contact lenses following reports that a Taiwanese student lost her sight after microscopic bugs ate through her eyeballs. Uh, ah! uh, this is, I, I saw this story too. It is one of the most horrifying things that I could possibly imagine. Yeah. The story, which went viral on social media this week, described how Lian Kao, 23, reportedly did not remove her limited wear disposable contact lenses for six months straight and even wore them while swimming. Now, I want to, I want to, I, I, I honestly want to know. <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm, I'm so baffled by this. How did she keep them on while she was swimming? I don't know. Everybody I've ever known who has accidentally gone swimming with their contacts in had lost them. Yeah, I remember the one time One time we went swimming somewhere when I would normally wear contacts. I said, no, I'm putting them in here. I'm wearing my glasses. Fuck you guys. I'm not doing that. No. Oh. As a result, amoeba got under her lenses and tunneled through her corneas, causing permanent damage that led to blindness in both eyes. The single wow. cell bug called Ancanth amoeba can survive in tap water, swimming pools, and hot tubs. Tap water uh, uh while an amoeba burrowing into one's cornea is certainly an extreme case we want people to realize the important of importance of using contact lenses as prescribed said dr tim hilson chair of the eye physicians and surgeons of ontario because they are worn directly on the eye contact contacts create an environment that could lead to infections corneal ulcers and in rare cases blindness yeah, I've actually, you know, I've, I've slept with contacts in before. I've went like a day or two without them. Oh my god, I could not do it again. Just, ah! The amount of eye drops I needed because, the, you know, they kept drying out and and just, just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So, eye stuff just really grosses me out. Like, pink eye is probably one of the scariest things in the world to me. Just like, uh. Yeah, but for six months? Jeebus! Oh, no! No, just, just, ah! Oh, make my, my, my eyes feel dry just thinking about it. Just, ah! Just, yeah, well, and the thing is, like, you know, at some point she had to know there was a problem, and the article I read had said something about, like, she didn't, you know, at that point she decided not to take him out because she was scared. Yeah. Is, isn't that the exact reason that you should take them out? Yeah. And, and go to a doctor and not just, like, leave them in? Yeah, and, and where did... The, okay, this was in Canada. Canada, you have a better health care system in the, than we do here in the States. You could have went to the doctor and you would have been all right. You know, I don't, I don't think you would have had to sell your house to go to the doctor. You know, so, just, you know, just saying. You know, not going to the doctor immediately if it was in the States would be more understandable. Because you go to the doctor here in the States, you might have to sell your house just to well, pay for it. Well, not even just not immediately. Like, six months? And, and she had to go blind first? Like... Yeah. It's like, ugh. really? Really? Ugh. Six months. Ugh, no. Eyes are gross. <laughs> yeah. As we can see. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> Oh, here's something else that's also horrible and, and really stupid. Did you ever hear the one about the drunk driver who, in the midst of a road rage incident, ran himself over with his own car? Well, then brace yourself because you're about to. By the way, that is how it is written. And this is out of Florida. Take a shot. <clears throat> According to Gainesville Police Department report, after rear-ending a vehicle that had stopped at a traffic light, 48-year-old Joseph H. Carl jumped out and began banging on the driver's window, yelling at the woman inside. He neglected to properly park his pickup truck, and in fear of their lives, the other vehicle sped off, and in doing so, the only obstacle holding Carl's Dodge 1500 truck in place was gone. As he flailed his arms ineffectually, <laughs> Carl was ran over by his own truck. I like this writer. <laughs> he flailed his arms ineffectually. This is just, I'm just, it's like the movies, like, ah! <laughs> oh. I, I, 
I love his excuse for what happened. Oh, God. Oh, the, the police and paramedics found the man stumbling him out, sticking a booze, and with an open and cool 16-ounce can, ounce can of Miller High Life sitting in the drinks holder in the truck littered with empty cans. The patient refused medical treatment and insisted to police that he did not drink and drive, but merely drinking on his way home. Common sense and a field sobriety test said otherwise, and Carl was arrested on the scene. No, 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 officer. I wasn't drinking and driving. I was drinking on my way home. Yeah, I'm uh, like, um, so, uh, uh, what part of that is not drinking and driving? I know, right? <laughs> the only way that would be anywhere possible is if he was, you know, I mean, walking. Because what he's saying is, I didn't drink and then drive. I was literally drinking and driving at the same time. Yes. Like, like I'm sorry, sir. Was that supposed to make it better? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, but but he wasn't done humiliating himself yet. He refused to take a breathalyzer, and shortly later, it was discovered that he'd had his license suspended back in 1991 and made the same refusal then. Finally, perhaps with the liquors and anesthetic of anesthetic blah, blah, blah. he can feel pain again <laughs> Harold gave in and was taken to UF Health Shands Hospital where he was treated for fractures in his foot and hand his blood alcohol test revealed a level of 0.22 nearly three times Florida's legal limit unsurprisingly he was arrested on charges of DUI and DUI with property damage what a putz that's in the article guys yes that, that is the article <laughs> Just, that, that wasn't just added in by Gover, that, that what a putz is in the article. Yes. And I was like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> How many beers did you have? I mean, and, and you know, I get drunk like once a month. I usually get it on really hard liquor because most beers I can't stand the taste of. Uh, Lambic is the only exception. And... I, I would have to wonder how many beers does it take to get this off your balls, piss ass drunk, to realize that you're you, you're thinking you're some kind of genius or or some kind of superhuman with with the trying to stop the truck, but it just didn't work. Oh, but point two two, yikes! Ah, oh, twenty two percent of his blood is alcohol, if I if I remember that right. Ah. Oh. That that's uh, a vampire could could probably you know try and feed off of him and get drunk itself. Yeah. Oh, so now we go one state north or west, depending on which direct, depending on which highway you're on. Drivers in Alabama will soon be greeted with the slogan "Welcome to Sweet Home Alabama." The state is paying Universal Records, which owns the trademark for the phrase from the Leonard Skinner rock anthem, $75,000 for five-year rights. The phrase will be featured on new green and white signs at the state line, which means there's going to be road work every time I try to go to goddamn Dothan. Ah. Uh, smaller versions of the signs will be placed at welcome centers. Kind currently, the signs say Alabama the Beautiful. The signs will be erected during the next few months. And will cost about $61,000. The state's agreement with Universal will allow it to use the phrase and other types of tourism promotions, and Alabama has the option of renewing the agreement after the first five-year term. Now, I put this in because I, I, just, I just wanted to kind of bitch at the Alabama government real quick. Because Alabama, you've got your issues with your racism. you got the... the fuckers up in your legislature that legislature that keeps wanting to put God in the government and everything you know like your typical GOP run state um, you know cut you know gay people can't get married but cousins can apparently last time I checked and instead of working and, 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 and of course there's also the economical problems that just the entire country has Alabama could do their part etc 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 they have all of these bigger glaring issues and they spend seventy five thousand dollars on a slogan yeah and just to get the rights to the slogan it's just then another sixty one thousand dollars to put up the signs yeah that's just over a hundred grand for all of this 
and you know you could have waited it really could have waited or if universal records wanted to be smart they could have said hey you know what free advertising for our song and 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 and, and, and leonard skinner free advertising everybody's thinking it anyway so let's just give it to them for free and then we wouldn't have to have this conversation just saying it's a waste of money because like i said number one people already can assume you know the two go hand in hand not a problem that's not the issue the issue is you're spending over a hundred grand on it it's yeah. just i and it's already a fixture according to the article at university of alabama football games oh so it's not like you know it's just Somebody wanted money. Alabama was willing to give it to them. Yeah, they profited off of somebody greedy profited somewhere, and the taxpayers are fronting the money. I'm honestly surprised that it took them this long to get the rights to the song. Yeah, you would think that Leonard Skinner back then, when they originally wrote the song, would have been like, "Here, guys, have it. You know, put it on your signs. It'll be great. It'll be great for us too." Hmm. Ah. And our last story that I picked up for this week. Oh, God. <laughs> I had to put this one in. Just when we thought we'd heard it all, this guy opened his mouth. Bert Farias, founder of Holy Fire Ministries, claims to know the raw, naked truth about why people are gay. They are possessed by fart demons. Yes, fart demons. Oh, but it gets better. Farias also claims that in choosing to be gay, a person chooses to engage in unclean demonic practices. One that happens, once that happens rather, they become possessed by putrid smelling demons so stinky they can drive pigs to suicide. <laughs> Just, uh, okay. Seriously, guy. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay. If, if this is true and fart demons are possessing you know, homosexuals, then I, I just need to take a random homosexual, take them to the pig farm, and, and just, you know, pig slaughtering would, would, could just be cut down, you know, the cost of pig slaughtering could be cut down immensely. You just, if, if this were true, you take a bunch of gay people, put them to work on the farm, pay them like, you know, 10 bucks, you know, 15 bucks an hour to fart on pigs all day long so we can have our bacon. Um, how did pigs commit suicide? <laughs> Am I the only one wondering this? I don't know, but but he but I know where he gets it from, and that's coming up. In an interview with Charisma magazine, Farius begged gay people to not get upset with me as he explained his groundbreaking new theory. You will see that I am actually trying to help you, he assured them. Well, he is helping me by giving me a good laugh. <laughs> he continued, homosexuality is actually a demon spirit. It is such a putrid-smelling demon that other demons don't even like to hang around it. He then went on to recount a story from the Bible to illustrate his fascinating point. Oh, boy. There is an account in the Bible where Jesus casts out 2,000 demons out of a man. The demons came out screaming and begged Jesus to send them into the pigs. The pigs didn't want them, so they ran, out a, ran down a steep hill and were drowned in the sea. What he neglected to mention was that when the demons begged Jesus to do it, Jesus is like, okay, in the pigs. And then the pigs went crazy and committed suicide. So, apparently, demons cause pigs to want to die. Yeah, and, and given that most pigs in, you know, the United States don't live by the sea, yeah. honestly, how are these pigs committing suicide? They they drown themselves in their in their troughs? I guess. Maybe, I don't know, um, maybe go up and pick a fight with a bull? Somehow break out of their pen and pick a fight with a bull, or... or I don't know. Go up, or, or again, going with the whole breaking out of their pen, go up into the mountains and, and, and step on a mountain lion's tail? That, that, that would do it. <laughs> Death by mountain lion, suicide by mountain lion. Pigs have more sense than some humans, he added. People embrace... Ooh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> People embrace homosexual demons, but the pigs would rather die than be possessed with demons. And how exactly does Farius know all of this? <sighs> One of God's prophets personally phoned him to let him know. That's right. 
because Call him on the telephone. <laughs> yeah. A genuine prophet of God told me that the Lord allowed him to smell this demon spirit and he got sick to his stomach, he said. It, it, it sounds like God snuck into his bed one night and Dutch ovened him. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. <laughs> it's just... Farias also warned that the growing acceptance of homosexuality in the United States is a sign from the man upstairs that our society is in the last stages of decay and that there will be severe physical, emotional, and spiritual consequences. Oh no, more people will be getting along with will be getting with people that they want to be with and won't be stoned to death from it. Oh no, how horrible. Oh no. Oh my. Them, society is falling apart. Yeah. In conclusion, Farius said, our culture's acceptance and celebration of gay behavior will never make it right. Wrong is wrong no matter how many people are for it, and right is right no matter how many people are against it. Homosexuality is not new. It's been around for thousands of years. It's as old as the devil himself. Okay, so by your use of thousands, I'm going to assume you're a young Earth creationist too. Yeah. I'm going to assume that until you can prove otherwise. So, yeah, okay, so wrong is wrong no matter how many people are for it. Well, you believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old, assuming, assuming here, and that is wrong. We have demonstrable evidence that's wrong, so wrong is wrong, and right is right. You know, and it doesn't matter if you're for one or for the other, or against both of them, or one of them, or what have you. The facts are there. Now, of course, you saying that homosexuality is wrong... That is more along the lines of your opinion, and if you think it's wrong, you can go over there in the corner with your wrongness and leave us all the fuck alone. <laughs> Please. With your wrongness. Yes, <laughs> all of their wrongness. Uh-huh. Oh, God. So do you, do you have any, any, anything else to add to that one? No, no. Oh. I just fart demons, guys. Yeah, fart. So what about bisexual people? Are they, like, partially Ooh. infested with a fart demon? Like, how does that work? That's a good question. That That is a very good question. Everybody out there, everybody out there, write in. Write in and, and tell us. What 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 kind of, would it, would it be a half fart demon? Would it be a diarrhea demon, maybe, for bisexuals? <laughs> I don't know. A shark demon? A shark demon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We, we, we must know this. Right, right, in, right into the show, rtgomerprod at gmail.com. Right in and, and let us know. A, a fart demon that the farts don't smell that bad? Maybe. <laughs> that could be it. Could be it. But let, let, we'll find out. Oh, so we got about 17 minutes left. We've used up all the news stories for this week. Ugh. But I do have one thing I have set aside for a while. And this was posted, uh, actually, this is almost two months old, so it's a little older, but it's something I set aside because I wanted to talk about it, and, and and of course, it's probably something that's still prevalent in the con scene, since it is convention season. Con Bravo was, what, I think it was last weekend, mm -hmm. right? And, oh. and then I think two weeks ago, I think Kat was at, uh, oh god, I want to say uh, um, um, Tulsa, something in Tulsa, I think. Uh, I know it's a con there that she had went to. So it, it's con season coming up. And then in a couple of months, the MAGFest 8.5 is going to be coming up as well for people who just can't get enough of MAGFest and have the extra money to throw around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and, and and of course, right now, San Diego Comic-Con is going on as we're recording this. Yes. So, so it is con season. And I got this article from New Statesman. And the t article is titled, You're Not a Real Cosplayer. Since when did dressing up for comics conventions lead to bullying? Cosplayers, particularly women, report being insulted, groped, or harassed at conventions. How did this happen in a community that prides itself on friendliness and cooperation? Well, we'll find out. Oh, lordy. And, and, and some of the cosplay pictures that they have up here, they look really great. Yeah. By the way. Oh, so, so just... There's some awesome stuff here. Since February, Piper Wolf and a friend have been stitching, carving, and painting her costume portraying Lilith, a wraith of war from the video game Darksiders 2. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that's the first photo here. And it looks mm -hmm. amazing, by the way. Yeah, it does. 
she's a cosplayer, and her hard work transformed her into Lilith at last weekend's – or the, that particular weekend's London MCM Expo, a popular convention for comics and pop culture fans. Gorgeously dressed in black velvet with delicate alien makeup, horned helmet, and ornate armor, Wolf and other cosplayers were often the center of attention, courted by photographers and welcomed by event organizers. Sadly, by attending, she also risked being insulted, groped, or harassed. Cosplayers, particularly women, frequently report being touched or photographed without permission at conventions. You know, because a woman is showing all of the skin in the world, that means she is automatically open to being groped, right? Yeah. It's, clearly. Yeah, clearly, because it's it's it stems back into this mentality that if a woman is showing skin, she must be asking for it. And and I hear the face palm, I, I hear the slap. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, because... you, you guys learn this in kindergarten. Keep your fucking hands to yourselves. Exactly. Kindergarten. God damn, how do you forget something you learn in kindergarten? Yeah. In the UK, most conventions have at least nominal policies against harassment and all have security. According to veteran cosplayers, the London Super Comic Con has the best reputation as a safe space largely because of its muscular response to a sexist video crew. Conventions run by the group Showmasters are a close second, while the popularity of MCM events may pose a barrier to adequate policing, it's full of too many people, a lot play the socially awkward card and you get guys trying to touch you. MCM needs to stop selling tickets at the door, said one woman cosplayer about the London MCM Expo. The other cosplayers take a different view. I think conventions really do try their best to stop as much as possible. It's not taken lightly. However, it's something that's down to the cosplayers reporting it to security, says one experienced cosplayer. That is is one thing. Yeah, I mean, if you're groped and you're groped, you know, without permission, report that shit. Yeah. You know, and, and I know that there will be times where you may not, you know, you might be afraid to for whatever reason. Maybe mm-hmm. there'll be retaliation or maybe they won't believe me or maybe nothing will get done. But if enough people do it, especially at a bigger convention, like right now, like San Diego Comic-Con is going on right now, one of the biggest ones. Mm-hmm. If enough people reported it and and got the, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, basically. You know, you keep doing that and saying, hey, this shit is happening, especially... Espe- you know, or you know, especially with proof, you don't necessarily, you know, and and I and I know that sounds might sound a little bad at first, but but you know, especially if you have evidence and proof that says, hey, look, this guy touched me, I didn't want it, and here's the video for it. Go after him, make feed him his own balls, that sort of thing. Well, you know? and and here's the thing, um, you know, I know a lot of people w- want to be like, oh, I didn't want to make a big deal about it, and so I didn't say anything, and. Um, or they're intimidated because the security staff is also male. Um, you know, most conventions will have female on staff somewhere who yeah. can take your complaint. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about that. Um, you know, just tell somebody that you want to talk to a woman. And the other thing is, you know, cons are put on by, by convention people for the attendees. You know, that's that's the whole purpose is that they want to ha- let the attendees have a great time. And so they really do care. Um, and so even if you don't necessarily feel comfortable talking directly to a person, mm-hmm. tweet about it. You yeah. know, at Con Bravo, we have, you know, at least one person monitoring the Twitter at all times. Yeah. So we can take care of issues as we see them come up. Yeah, and that's a good idea. I've I've actually seen it. A, I think I've seen it a few times on the Twitters or whatever. You know, something would happen and it would hit the Twitter, and it would get. Sometimes it would go viral. Sometimes it wouldn't, mm-hmm. but it would get to whatever con they're supposed to be tweeting at. So using using social media like that is a very good idea, especially when the majority of people you're going to meet at a con has access to this social media. Yeah, oh. and if nothing else, it at least warns the other people at the convention of what's going on. Right. Um, this year, I actually didn't make it to Con Bravo. I got very, very ill um, yeah. the night before I was supposed to fly out. Um, had a fever of 102, and it was awful. Oh. Um, and 
<laughs> but last year we had some people show up and they were harassing con goers and they were grabbing them and just generally being a nuisance and we found them right away and kicked them out and they were wearing the V for Vendetta masks and some poor guy was not with the group and cosplaying as them and this is how seriously we take things at Comrado. He that guy almost got kicked out because we couldn't confirm at first that he wasn't with them. Right. It turns out we found out that he wasn't and so he was allowed to stay because <laughs> In one of my favorite, you know, dumb criminal things ever, uh, they had a picture of themselves taken at one of the photo booths in the vendor's hall. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so uh, I, I took that as my trophy <laughs> when I collected go. their badges. <laughs> I was like, yep, thanks, guys. Whoop. Now we know exactly who you are. <laughs> yeah, and... And the the article's a little long, you know, for for the rest of this particular show. But there are a couple. There's one picture that I'm looking at. It's actually the uh, second one in. It's got a guy with a mohawk, and he's holding a sign that says, "You're a man. Men shouldn't cosplay. Women look hot. You look like a loser," with a hashtag, not a cosplayer. That was the thing that was going around. I think in the past couple of months or whatever, you know, people saying that you're not a cosplayer if you do this, and that is something I've. In fact, just as recently as today, I think it was a uh, Gail Simone. Uh, was was mentioning that you know what you you have the right body to cosplay whatever the fuck you want. I mean, if I wanted to cosplay, say Conan or whatever, either Conan, you know, think about whichever one, you know, I certainly would have the right to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, just as you know, if you wanted to cosplay, oh, uh, um, oh, let's say, um. Da -da 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 -da. Random, random uh, female who I cannot think of because there are way too goddamn many out there, who is the exact who in in <laughs> canon is her exact opposite body type of you. Yeah, I was like, you're gonna struggle to find like a stick straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you want, I guess to if cosplay... I wanted to cosplay as like Daria. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but the the point of the matter is. It doesn't matter if our body types match the character we want to cosplay as. Hell, if I I could probably get a few more pieces of art, a few more pieces of clothing together, and I could cosplay as Jack Harkness, because mm -hmm. I have the coat. That that the coat is a replica of Jack Harkness's coat from Torchwood, so I could do that, not a problem. And trust me, I do not look like John Barrowman. I might have Jack Harkness's sex drive, but not his looks. <laughs> You know, especially with this beard. Oh, yeah. the beard, the glasses, and uh, I think my hair is a little darker than his, maybe. Mm. And I am definite. Well, I'm also straight, so that that's also another thing. But but I could still do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, it really does not matter. And and it's just when it comes, all in all, to kind of wrap it up a little bit because we are getting a little shorter. When it comes to cosplaying, just do it. I don't care if you want to. I don't care if you're black and you want to play, um, um, oh, uh, Mega Man, for example. You know, it, that doesn't matter. I don't care if you're white and you play the Marvel Universe version of Nick Fury. It doesn't matter. Cosplay who you want to cosplay as. It's as simple as that, really. Mm -hmm. So you know. If if you have the time and the effort to put things together, do it. You know, and if people if people give you shit for it, and you know, just you can either just ignore them, walk on, maybe give them a flip off. And if they start harassing you and making you feel unsafe, then you get somebody and they'll take care of the rest. It's it's really simple, and and it's simple in theory, and it's simple to say it. And I know it's difficult to actually follow through on it. So and I do understand that. But the more people who do actually do this, the more people that gets the word out there to do things like this, hopefully it will be it will become easier for others to do the same. Yeah. That is that is my hope. My favorite cosplayer is somebody that I saw on Tumblr and it's like this I don't know how old he is, like eighty five mm -hmm. year old man. And it, he just does these awesome cosplays. And it's like, yes, 
sir. You are awesome. I want to be you when I'm old. There you go. And yeah, and, and old people too. Hell yeah, man. You know, I want to see I want to see an old person, uh, you know, cosplay Ash Ketchum. That would be hilarious, and and, and also awesome. <laughs> you know, because because there's awesome and hilarity factor in there. Because because yeah, he's gonna look awesome, but you you it is gonna look a little goofy because of the age difference. But mm-hmm. once you get past the initial goofiness, it'll be awesome. Yeah, cosplaying should be fun. Yeah. Oh, so, and and that's where we're going to end it. Cosplay should be fun. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you're listening to this, and and because I've put up in the thing that we're not that we'll talk a little bit about the uh, uh, auditions or whatever. I know I did at the beginning. A little bit more here. I should know pretty much at least. Like I said, I think we got like six right now as we're recording this. Um, I should know most, if not all, of the ones that have sent in so far by the next show, and I'll be able to make some sort of an announcement then. I'm putting this on the show so you people can hold me to it. That will be next week. And next week, we should be able to have Lady Spaz on the show, because life won't be so hectic for her then, <laughs> which will be awesome. And also, I'm actually going to uh, be on a guest spot of Insert Witty Name Here over on uh, Nerdvice, which is going to be fun. It's going to be awesome, and I look forward to you guys listening to it. <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah. Where can we find you, Holly? You can find me all over the social media as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. So Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. Um, my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and you can find me over at Nerdvice. Yay! And speaking of Nerdvice, you can find me there as well. But if you want to find where I actually originate from on the web, um, my stuff is at rtgomer.com, rtgomer productions. I've even got business cards now. That's awesome. And I'm passing them around. Well, I have to revamp them a little bit, but but uh, you know they'll be passing around. So if you're anywhere close to me and you're listening to this, you can well maybe it was because of the business card. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, but you can also find me on the social media at Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 xx And you can find my site's uh, Facebook page as well, you know, RT Gomer Productions. And you could also uh, support me through Patreon if you like the stuff that I do and you want to toss some money at me for, you know, for different shows and to help improve the quality of recordings. I really want to get a really good sound mixer to put up on here to where – because I know at one point, Holly, you were – you were liking the idea of like having the different sounds during the show at some point, like little sounders that go off, and I wouldn't mind that. I just need a really good mixer for it so I can <laughs> plug it in and do all of that. It would be great. Uh, but that's going to take a little bit of money, and how you guys can help if you want to help out, just head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. You can pledge as little or as much as you want. Keep in mind it is per video, and I – well, I say video, but it's really per production. They all go up on YouTube anyway. But it's but I put up about 20 to 25. I put this out there. That way you know what you're getting into before you pledge any money. So, but again, patreon.com slash gomer 21 x If you give $5 or more, then I will – I could very well do a review for you if you want. I've actually – I'm actually finishing up on one. I've just got to get some things recorded. I've got the notes written. I've got – I think I've got all the stuff that I need. Uh, otherwise, it's just doing the last few touches and then editing, and boom, there it goes. So uh, so they do come out. <laughs> it's just been a while. Holy shit. Uh, and, of course, I would be remiss if I did not pimp her out as well. Uh, my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, she is an artist, a great artist, award-winning animator, and she has her own Patreon page, patreon.com slash Hop. If you go over there, toss some money at her, you'll get some sketches, you might get some poster work, some title card artwork, or if you throw enough money at her, you'll get a 30-second animation. I need to remind you that she is an award-winning animator, and she is awesome. Also my girlfriend, who is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) So with all of that, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next week with, at least in part, the results of at least this round of auditions for the site. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine, signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an R.T. Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.